And this what we do. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I told y'all! Shout out to Bird B. Pay attention! Kane have messed with Nick's brother, but you don't know what the work is. He is changing up. Uh, he ain't the same. Kane says you talk a lot. Your stupid little brother went to scrap mom's house. And then she came to the precinct. Your brother needs to make this shit right. I'm on. Enemies are dangerous, especially when they're family. What's going on, YouTube? We back in the Low Key Cave. Keyshawn Nimes YouTube page, aka Mr. Low Key. And we back with another TV show review. And we back with some more Power Book 3, Raising Canaan Season 3. And this is Episode 7, We're All Guilty Review. Yes, man, yes. Once again, before we even get started, they ain't found nobody. Everybody keeps saying Unique dead. They still ain't found nobody. I'm just saying, why they got to keep putting emphasis on it that they ain't found nobody? I'm telling you, don't have this nigga pop up at the season finale laid up in the bed somewhere. He, he just unconscious or some shit. I'm just saying, I'm not, I, I was convinced. I mean, Joey Badass came out and said his character dead, but you know how that shit go. He ain't going to come out and say, yeah, I'm alive to give away a little twist if that's what they going to do. I'm just saying, man, we got to keep hope alive. Unique might be still around. But uh, once we get into this, we got your boy Ronnie. Shout out to the uh, soundtrack, too, for Power Book 3 Raising Kane, especially having all that good uh, retro 90s nostalgia hip-hop. We start this off with Tennessee playing in the background. You're not the play. My bad, y'all. But anyway, I was jamming while my boy was getting his ass whooped. As far as, you know, Kane is pretty much, I ain't going to call him his landlord. Is he the landlord? But it's the guy that he was pretty much using for his carriers and his runners. So, you remember when they was having that conversation last episode as far as his whole thing with Kanan and the fact that he was losing his workers or whatever or the whole thing where he going to call the police or whatever and Ronnie was overhearing that shit. So, he pretty much bringing it to him. his awareness like, nigga, you better not be talking about a goddamn thing. And more so of just that arrangement of seeing who Ronnie is and what he can get done as far as to your boy. It's more so of just putting that emphasis on it, nigga. You better not talk. Because if anything go down, we coming straight to you first because you the one was making the threats. So, yeah, we just pretty much getting everybody established to who Ronnie really is and as far as that connection between him and Kanan. Because you got your boy Famous coming back to get his shit out of his apartment. Yes, Kanan don't make this nigga move out of his apartment. We got another um, resident that's getting moved out of their place who we're going to talk about later on. But, yeah, your boy Kanan done made Famous move out. He going back home to his mama. And I was curious. I was like, how the hell he going back to his mom? Didn't his mama tell him to move out? But I guess they fixed their relationship or they mended their relationship or whatever, which I think is going to, something that's going to come into play, especially with this famous song and with the cops investigation as far as this task force. I definitely think some shit going to come into play with his mama coming back into the picture. But, yeah, man, your boy goddamn Rodney Myers, man. His... The writing for him is so damn good, bro. Let me just put that out there. Shout out to the writing crew who came up with this villain. He is going to go down as one of the all-time power villains, too. We need to get that out here. Because, once again, the man ain't even got to say no lines. It's just the shit he be doing and the fact that he like that type of individual where certain things got to be organized a certain way. Just a little attention to detail that they do. Because when he busts into the apartment to uh, beat up old buddy, when they leaving out, he rearranges coats. Because I think a coat is on the floor or something. But he put that shit like in some type of order or something. And that's kind of like he was doing when he be eating the pizza or the food or whatever. And he like rearranging the plates and shit. And moving certain things in a certain place where it need to be. He just got these certain mannerisms with him where the shit is just off. But it's like... <laughs> well, shout out to Ronnie, like I said, the writing team behind his character, man. Because even when we get this cringy ass scene between him and Giuliani, man... As far as her basically coming on to him and he just sitting his ass there like a Terminator or some shit, like an android or something. And we got another person who ends up getting kicked out of her house, Pepperica. I mean, I don't <laughs> I know that ain't her name, but you know, Unique's baby mama. This is her and Unique's house. And your boy Ronnie just done came back with his date, Juliana. And pretty much telling Unique baby mama, you need to get your shit and go. She telling like, nigga, this is still me and Unique's. Get your shit and go. Say less. <laughs> but it's more so of Juliana pretty much telling Ronnie, like, you, you need to make sure people not really seeing us like that. 
And also, you need to put a hinge on family. And more so, I guess, Paprika or whatever she's seen with her. And she's like, yo, family can be more dangerous. So, it's almost like she's going to be putting certain shit in Ronnie's head, too. They're going to be leaning off each other as far as not only with business, but with information. Because this kind of puts something in, I feel like, Ronnie's head where he's like, he got to make sure he put, like, some firm words behind, like, don't try to go out looking for no answers or nothing as far as his uh, conversation with Pepper Rico, which we're going to talk about later on. Your boy Marvin, man. This is how you know some shit about to happen with Marvin this season because he just done had too much of a good art. His art just been too good. Nigga on some Robin Hood shit. He like on some Black Batman shit, like a savior or some shit. And once again, the most reasonable character out of power right now, Lulu out here drinking, Rock. She don't know if she want to be a civilian or get back into the drug game. But your boy Marvin, though, Marvin, outside of him being a hitman mailman, my man is out here really trying to help people. And it's the whole thing with him and the guy from the group, as far as the anger management group that he's still out here helping because he ends up pulling up on his house and the guy's daughters are outside in the car because he's in there using so Marvin pretty much gets on his ass, man. And, I mean, it's that dynamic between those two because I feel like I was on the edge a little bit with him thinking maybe he a little undercover, a cop or something. Or maybe he a snitch working with the cops. I don't know. And I still might not be wrong. It might be a situation where he might have to make a choice between his daughters and pretty much telling on Marvin if he got some information about Marvin. So I definitely think he, he it's going to be a situation that comes into play with the investigation. The task force already kind of got they don't really got nothing on Marvin, but they kind of asking questions about Marvin, especially with Howard or whatever. Speaking of your boy Howard, man, I'm telling you, Rockman would be fucked if it wasn't for Howard, bro. They whole organization, they shit would be done if it wasn't for Howard. This nigga is on point every time, but I do feel like shit is going to backfire after the situation ends up happening. Because, of course, you know, drunk-ass Lulu went over there talking to Scrap Mom, so now she up there at the precinct. Just so happy your boy Howard catches her and he goes in for that goddamn touchdown play. He goes in for the interception. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you, he made that play quick because she was ready to talk. And she is even kind of uncomfortable. Well, I ain't gonna say uncomfortable, but I think it's the whole thing with her saying, like, I ever since Scrap got killed, she's been talking to one officer and that other officer is the one she's been talking to as far as ping. But Howard is like, Yeah, you can get all that information to me. So she pretty much lets him know what Lulu told her. And he's letting her know, don't say shit else to nobody except me and you. But you know how we're about to go to rock right now. <laughs> we about to go to rock immediately after that and let her know what's up as far as Lulu drinking ass. And Lulu don't even remember shit. Because once he does get confronted by Marvin, he like, I don't know. I, I don't even remember that. I don't know why I'm not locked up. And like I said, your boy Howard coming through for the win. But now she pretty much gave an ultimatum as far as Marvin and Rock. Lulu, you gotta go take out Scrap Mom. And you know this shit not about to go good by the end of this season, bro. Somebody's going down. Between Lulu and Marvin, somebody's going down. And I almost think it could be a situation where it's between Famous and Lulu where somebody ends up getting thrown in a wig set as far as witness protection. They might even go that route, and that's how people start end up going down. So we're going to have to see. Somebody definitely going down, and it might be even getting to the indication that Marvin is going to go to prison behind certain moves that they done made. I'm telling you, because it's so much of a good arc we done got for Marvin, and it might be one of the other things that happened to make Jukebox transition. But, speaking of Jukebox, um, before we get to that, though, Famous, man, he done got back to the house, and he having that conversation with his mama, and pretty much he fighting his own demons, same with little Lulu, as far as the shit he done done, pretty much regretting the fact that he even moved out and got into business with Kane. <laughs> and like I said, he really wasn't trying to get into business with Kane, but it, at the same time, he kind of didn't have no choice, being how the Kane came up with the proposition and kind of how affirmative Kane done kind of been these last couple episodes. But you can see your boy, he like, man, this ain't it. <laughs> like, I should stay on mama. The streets is not for me. And that's basically what Famous is at right now. The streets ain't for me. Outside of that, your girl Jukebox, man. I feel like she keeps going back to this whole military thing to have a backup plan in case the girl group thing don't go through because she's really trying to get out of Queens. Like, she's just trying to do something else. She's trying to get away. So you can see that she is still going and getting certain testing things done and still asking for certain um, questions and still getting certain information. And I think this is more so her backup plan in case this girl group don't go through. Speaking of the girl group, Aisha and Kanan. 
Your boy Kane, and he out here trying to get it in. He experienced. You got to remember, he was with a full-grown woman. So my man is ready. So he locked and loaded, but Aisha ain't trying to hear all that. <laughs> Your boy Kane in no demon time. Because when Aisha's basically saying, nah, I'm good, trying to leave the movies, boy Kane said, you better go catch a train. I ain't taking your ass nowhere. Kane, <laughs> damn. <laughs> It is what it is. So, yeah, your boy Kane is saying, you got to go do something else. I think he already kind of had a little backup plan, though, because when him and Aisha, before they even go to the movies, he and they're talking, you know, to the other group member, the light-skinned chick. But you see that we're getting these build-up layers as far as Kane and transitioning into who he's trying to become as far as that confrontation with him in jukebox, which we're going to get to. But just more so of him rebelling against his mama. I want y'all to stop the comparison to as far as Tariq and Kane. I get it. I do get it because of the whole thing with where he came from. But I feel like it's so many different elements that Kane has been around. Tariq, yeah, it's Ghost and Tommy. But I feel like Ghost tried to keep – he really was good at keeping the shit away from them. I know certain shit went down, but he was good at it. Rock, on the other end, I feel like – she was in and out with it as far as with the shit Kane was able to see, being that his uncles was a part of this shit too. So I don't like that comparison as far as Kane and the tree where younger Kane. Anyway, I do kind of do. I do can I can see though why, especially with what we getting right here, the experience or why the relationship was the way it was between Tariq and OG Kane, especially with everything that he going through with his mama and kind of his rebellion, rebellion against her and kind of how Tariq was doing to get go. So I do get that. Anyway, man, um, we more so get Jukebox pretty much putting a warning out there because she love her cousin. She care about her cousin. With no soul in anything, she care about the group, too. And she feel like Kane and getting involved with not only one but two of them, like, you really about to mess shit up and what we trying to do moving forward with this girl group because I'm really trying to get out of Queens. And everybody with this whole thing with where the Jukebox said that we've seen that OG power, why we ain't got that Jukebox yet, I love the slow build. I love the character development like I've been saying. But I feel like that jukebox y'all talking about has always been there. She kind of be holding things in, I feel like, because you can see how this shit is kind of like anytime she make that transition or she get that flip or she flip that switch, where you see she kind of been on her nice shit or she kind of been doing what she doing with the group. But when old girl, she seen the light-skinned shit talking to Kane and she told him to stay the fuck away from my cousin. And old girl being smart and jukebox didn't say shit. She was just like, hmm. Like that's like I said, you can see that she has that built up in her and she's not scared of shit, especially Kane. Cause when we get to that conversation though, but your boy Kane is like I said on Demon Time, your girl is too, and I think she knows what she's doing. I think she even trying to maybe start her own riff within a group to be like a solo act. But how you doing it? The woman that made it clear, y'all a group. But she ends up calling Kanan over and Kanan get what he want because he like, shit, I couldn't get it from Aisha. But you calling, here I go. In the midst of this, boy, 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 Burke is back in the picture. Her father is anyway. And seeming like he got some questions. Seeming like after he done pretty much grieved or whatever, now he wants some more answers. Trying to figure out what was going on with Shannon as far as Burke. So he more so is collecting, I think, some more items from the police station once he was in the Howard. And once again, your boy Howard, he's always there. Whenever some situation or some shit going down, he get that look on his face. You good? What's going on? <laughs> Goddamn, Jay Reed. But um, it just seemed like he definitely got some shit on his mind. Cause when he goes to talk to Bert's ex girlfriend or whatever. It seemed like that he might be wanting to have some questions about Howard, but she cuts him off the same way he kind of did her. And she did this, though, with Burt, too. When she started saying shit about Howard, she's like, that ain't my business. I don't want got shit to do with that. But you also got to remember the way this nigga Howard was looking at her when he came up on her. That nigga was on some Candyman shit standing behind her. <laughs> she's like, I'm good. I don't need to know shit about shit. I'm good. So it's going to be interesting moving forward what Burt's father is going to be up to because it does seem like he's not about to stop. It does seem like he's going to try to get some answers, so you can tell some shit is going down. And how we're getting this promotion and shit, which we're going to talk about, if I ain't already talked about it, everything seems like it's going to be coming into play on in the full circle. Outside of that, your girl Rock. You seen last episode that she was ready to make these moves back into the game after everything she's been doing seemed like it's backfiring. People don't believe anyway, so why not? So she pretty much steps in to a unique place as far as what he was doing. It's not a good transition at first because they kind of like, we heard no unique day, so this business proposition is there. We ain't trying to do none of this shit. But 
Rock ain't unique. <laughs> Rock ain't unique. And she letting them know, I'm not about to be small time, and I'm going to have multiple locations and all of that. So she pretty much just putting her homework in. She going to the Chinese spot, the one spot the Unique was running, and now she's trying to talk to the owner who has multiple spots so she can have a way of moving a product here and there around. And you can kind of see the way Rock does her homework, the way she studies shit from the goddamn time of day to the nighttime, and the way she just seeing how she want to organize shit, something Unique wasn't doing. Ronnie was somewhat right on some layers of Unique. Like, that whole shit was like, nigga, this is one building. You ain't doing shit. This is a slow, slow-ass process. Once again, I feel like Unique had a plan, but the plan wasn't moving fast enough. You see how rock she's on it. She like, uh-uh, uh-uh. And more so, too, they kind of gave her like a two-month probation period. So she's trying to get out here and get some shit moving. And you can see it. She definitely has some things in place. So it's going to be interesting to see how she's able to make this transition into these Chinese places and moving this work. Outside of that, your boy Howard getting up some promotion, Queen's Narcotics. And once again, I don't know if this shit going to go through because it's a lot of stuff that's starting to just seem like it's going to be tumbling down. The whole thing with his conversation with Scrap Mama. The whole thing with Burt Father seeming like he's coming back into the picture. So it's going to be interesting to see how they're going to play this out. If Howard going to be able to move forward or if he end up going down after everything that's done happened since then. Even with his shooting, which I think ain't still been solved. Your boy, Ronnie Myers, he got a holler at Paprika, and I don't know what's up with this niggas, but I guess it's a family thing when it comes to Honey Nut Cheerios, because she has some in her goddamn grocery bag. <laughs> but anyway, Ronnie pretty much making his threats, letting her know, like, hey, y'all on the family I got, but it's more so subliminal, letting her know, because he, it ain't been confirmed that Unique is dead. They pretty much saying it's been dead, but they still ain't found nobody. But Ronnie coming up talking to her, and like, y'all the only ones I got left. And he pretty much in the king, like, nigga, I know. And even letting her know that that person could be still out here. So you never know. You might need to just keep your head down. So we pretty much just making subliminal threats, as you can tell, as far as Ronnie Myers. <laughs> and Pepperica just standing there, like, hey, hey okay. Jukebox and Kanye, man. Jukebox pretty much shows up, because like I said, she's seeing everything going on with him and the way he moving and the people he being around. She's saying, like, nigga, I know you. This ain't you. You just trying to rebel against your mama, you scared little boy. Mad at your mama, little cry baby, when, when, when. And oh my gosh, man. If this didn't make you think about OG Power and the conversation between Jukebox and Kanan when he pretty much was trying to lie to her about um, Ghost and what happened and the fact that she would never give him his medicine and the fact that she kept calling him out. And that was like our first time seeing somebody talk to Kanan that way. Somebody who was pretty much over him. Somebody who like, I know you, I know you. And this is that conversation. This is, ooh, I love this chemistry. I love the writing. Because once again, the way you can see that transition as far as, this is the younger version of them. But I can see that older version of them when they was arguing. It doesn't take, it ain't, I just love that, man. Because you can see that build up of kind of the friction that's going to come between them. Especially with how important this girl group is to Jukebox. But also, I think it's going to become a situation with Ronnie because he's sitting there eating his goddamn Cheerios while they arguing. And pretty much after Jukebox pretty much calls Kanan out, he pretty much like, I can go talk to if you want to. And Kanan like, hell no, you ain't going to talk to my goddamn cousin. You ain't got shit to say to her. Me and my family ain't going to have nothing to do with me and you. So I think it's going to be a situation where Ronnie is looking and seeing how his relationship is with Juke and his mama. And the fact that you know he don't like rock, I think it's going to be an issue or a way where Kane is going to end up killing Ronnie because he's going to end up trying to kill Rock and maybe even Jukebox too. Once again, I am very much convinced that Ronnie is not Breeze. I don't think Snaps is either because I've been seeing y'all saying Snaps might be Breeze. I don't think that's the situation either. I just think we have not got introduced to Breeze yet. So it could be a situation where we get introduced to him in the season finale if Ronnie do get took out. Um, and if he do get took out, I can very much see Snaps and them putting Kane in, in like that big dog position like you the guy now you are the one and even with this episode once again it's without Ronnie even being Breeze once again this is still somebody who's going to have an impact on Kanan's life Kanan is studying him in this episode the interaction between him and Famous he's just studying him saying okay this is how I gotta be if I want to uh not only run a organization but make sure people f respect me 
fear, respect, you know what I'm saying? So I feel like the way he just looking at him and the way he's seeing him, the way he doing things or whatever, he's studying him. That's why I, I do I also don't I don't think he breathes. I do not think Ronnie is breathes. At the same time, I do think it's going to come down to a situation where he's going to try to kill either Rock or Jukebox or both. And that's when Kane is going to step in and take him out. It could possibly be his first body because you got to remember in the original OG Power, when I think um, Jukebox was like, I was there when you caught your first body. This all could probably come about to come into play, man, I'm telling you. But didn't Kane catch his first body from old buddy that he shot uh, Unique's homeboy in the first seat? Never mind, never mind. Anyway, uh, Lulu, man, your goddamn boy Lulu. He get a visit from his mom's. It's pretty much just need some money to pay some bills. And more so talking about the whole thing with him owning the bar, why you ain't got more money, or the situation with his father saying this is kind of how he died, and Lulu letting her know this wasn't it. It was your black ass. <laughs> you took him to an early grave. But, um, it's more so shit just piling up on Lulu after everything he already dealing with with the relationship between him and Rock. But not only that, just all the demons is starting to come back as far as the ghosts he's seeing. I wonder if he's going to start seeing D-Wiz. But um, it's more so of what he got to take care of after he done put everybody in the situation as far as what he said to Scrap Mom. So now he pretty much got to go do this execution. My whole thing is why would y'all let this nigga go there drunk? It's clear that Lulu is drunk. More than likely, he's going to leave some type of fingerprint somewhere. I'm thinking he had gloves on, though. But it's just so much that shit that's more than likely going to come behind this. And that's what I was saying about Howard. And it could come behind, uh, it could come back on him because he was the one that told Pina to leave. And he had that conversation with her, and then she ends up dead. All of this, I feel like, going to come back. And then they've been questioning him about Marvin. Yeah, it's definitely going to be some repercussions behind this one. They ain't they, uh, walk away clean from this one. But yeah, man, Lulu was gone. I think, once again, it could be a situation with him going in the wig sick, if not dying, and Marvin going to prison. Like, Rock could end up losing both of the brothers this season in two different situations. Or one of them end up dying as far as them going ahead and taking out Lulu because he just, he done. Because after he takes out Scrap Mama, he's seeing Scrap. And that's why all he keeps seeing. And pfft, never racing, once again. The eeriness of 50 Cent and why he be talking, man. Just making you look at Lulu like, boy, that boy going through it. <laughs> Shout out to 50 in the narration. But, yeah, man, Lulu, I think, done. And he definitely giving me them Kevin vibes now from Snowfall. <laughs> He's trying to give me Kevin vibes. But it is definitely 100% going to be some repercussions behind this kill. And I think it's going to come down on Howard. I think it's going to start to come down a little bit on Rock, possibly. With her connection to Brock Marvin being her brother, and even on Marvin, as far as everything with Luke, it's going to be some repercussions behind this, I'm telling you. Outside of that, though, man, another good episode. Once again, this is why this is the best power spinoff as far as the uni power universe or whatever. Y'all let me know how y'all feel about this recent episode. As far as episode 7, we are all guilty. Make sure you hit that like button. If you're not subscribed to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit that notification bell let you know when I upload new videos. Other than that, we out. <laughs>